Did you know that when it comes to readers purchasing a children's book, the book cover is always one of the most important deciding factors? And that's why today I am sharing the most important do's and don'ts of an impactful children's book cover. Hi there, I'm Evie, an award-winning children's author and ghostwriter over on eviejones.com and the creator of Children's Book University. I create videos specifically for children's authors, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss your weekly videos. So let's dive right in so you can create a powerful and impactful children's book cover as well. First, we will want to get really clear on what it is that we are trying to achieve with our children's book cover because that's what will guide us in all our following decisions. Second, we will look at the most common mistakes made on a children's book cover and how to fix them. Third, I will share how to field test different children's book covers and fourth, in the end, I will share a powerful example of a successful children's book cover. Now, one of the things I would like to start out with is that we authors can change our book cover anytime, even after it has already been published. The only thing we won't be able to change is the title of our book because that is directly connected to our ISBN and of course our author name. But any other design aspect can be changed, adjusted and tweaked anytime. So that's why even if you've already published your book, we can still apply those tweaks I am about to share with you. I love children's books and because I'm a full-time children's book author, I pay very close attention to them, especially those that are selling well. And so there are always certain things I notice and see. The first thing I would like you to consider is this. What exactly are you trying to achieve with your book cover? With our cover, we will want to convey a number of things right away. And I say right away because we only have a fraction of a second to catch a potential buyer's attention with our cover. And in this fraction of a second, we will want to convey two things. What age group this book is for and what the book is about. Now, what does this mean? Looking at these children's book covers examples here, we should be able to tell right away that the animals book is for very young kids while the girl who drank the moon is for much older ones. So looking at this age progression here, we can see that with the increase in age, the covers become more complex and more detailed. Most of these covers also show us right away what we can expect this book to be about or they at least hint toward the book's topic. So the goal of our children's book cover then should be to share this information with potential readers without them having to read the book description first. Because looking at our own shopping behavior, we know that we won't take the time to click through to read a product's description unless the image already convinces us that this might be something we are looking for. Now, when it comes to children's book covers, there are five common mistakes I see made quite often. And that is the wrong font, wrong sizing, wrong title color, wrong background image or wrong placement, and incongruency. So let's look at each one individually. The first most common mistake is using the wrong font for our title. We often associate certain types of fonts with certain types of genres or styles. So for example, we all immediately have a certain type of font in mind when I say all stars, right? Because that's usually the font used on sports clothing. The wrong font in the context of children's books then means that the font doesn't quite fit with the message of your book. Here's a great example. Book cover example two and three set a certain expectation as to what the book might be about. Because of the font choice, the second cover seems like it's about a scary bedtime story, while the third cover looks like the book might be about traditional old German stories. The type of font we use for our children's book cover matters a lot because it sets the mood and tone of our story even before the readers open our book. A wrong font may also contribute to a decreased readability of the book title. Calligraphy-based fonts are especially hard to read and while they look beautiful, these are generally not the type of font we want to use for our children's book cover because if potential readers can't make out the title right away, they won't take the time to decipher our lettering and instead keep scrolling. The second most common mistake is the wrong size of our font. 
Just like the wrong font, the wrong size will greatly impact the readability of our book title, especially when it is too small. When designing my book covers, I always try to make the title as big as possible. Unless we have an already well-known name like Jimmy Fallon or Kelly Clarkson, for example, the font size order from biggest to smallest should look something like this, where the title is the biggest, followed by the subtitle, followed by the author and illustrator names. And like I already said, over time, the font size used to display the author's name may increase the more popular or known the author becomes. The third most common mistake is the wrong title color. There are of course no right or wrong colors in and of itself for the title or subtitle of a book. But when combined with the cover image, the lettering can easily blend too much into the background, which makes it really hard to read the title. Here's a great example of that blending and sticking out. So we will want to make sure that the chosen font color and the background color are visually easily distinguishable and in high contrast to each other. The fourth most common mistake is the wrong background image. This common mistake has to do with the chosen background image as well as the placement of the title. Now generally, the less busy a children's book cover, the better. And that's mainly because a less busy cover ensures an easier readability of our title and subtitle. So these two covers are a great example right here where the first one is just too busy, making it really hard for the title to stick out. Now, oftentimes a great solution is to simply ask your illustrator to have part of our image showcase a single color that we can then use as the backdrop for our title lettering. So in this example here, it's still the same image, but we simply decreased the background clutter by making these buildings smaller, which really opens up the space. And the sky now also provides a great backdrop for our title, making it really easy to read. And the last most common mistake is incongruency. Up to this point, these most common mistakes had to do with the readability of the title, right? But another very common mistake is that the image of the cover isn't congruent with the message and topic of our children's book. So here are two examples I put together so you can see what I mean. The first title reads, The Happy Little Girl, but then the image we see is a crying girl. And the second title reads, The Dancing Kangaroo, but the image below clearly shows a cat. Now these could of course be attention grabbing techniques, but usually when these inconsistencies happen, they happen unintentionally. So these inconsistencies can easily be prevented if we ensure that our book's main character is part of the cover and that the mood matches the title. Now in the intro, I talked about field testing our children's book cover. What do I mean by that? A great way to test what you should be paying attention to when it comes to the creation of your own children's book cover is to perform a little search on Amazon. When scrolling through the search results, ask yourself these questions. What is it about this cover that catches your attention and that makes you stop scrolling? So for example, was it the color that has been used for the background or was it the title that was easily readable or was it the contrast between the background and the lettering? And second, what about the cover lets you know that it is indeed about the topic you were looking for? You know, is there a dragon on the cover when you were searching for a dragon book? Does the title contain the keyword or key phrase you've been searching for? And then looking at your own cover, would your cover pass what I call the thumbnail test? When performing a search on Amazon, Amazon provides us with a list of results, right? These results never show us the full-sized image or the full-sized cover. Instead, we see the thumbnail-sized version of it. So if we were to shrink down your cover to a thumbnail, would we still be able to clearly see and read your title and the main elements of your book cover? So that's how you go about the field testing of your own cover. Now to put everything we've just talked about all together, let's look at a cover of a successful children's book and test its different elements. One of our favorite children's books in our house is called Dragon's Love Tacos. 
The title is large, the font is easily readable, and the color of the title makes it stick out from the background. And the title as well as the chosen image are congruent as well, right? The title mentions dragons and tacos, and we indeed see a dragon and tacos in the illustration. And the background image is simple and not too busy, especially right behind or around the title. Also notice that both the title and the image are easily readable and recognizable on the thumbnail as well. And again, this is important because that's often the only size we will be provided with after having performed a search on Amazon. So when the time comes to have your own cover created, be sure to perform the thumbnail and readability test by shrinking your cover down to this thumbnail size and see if your title is still readable and you can still tell what the illustration is meant to represent. One of the very first things a potential buyer will see is your cover. Whether you decide to go with a square, vertical or landscape layout, only a few things are as important as a cover when it comes to first impressions. You worked so hard to write your beautiful book, so we want to make sure to give it a cover it deserves and that will attract buyers and readers. And remember, even if your beautiful book has already been published, you can always make changes to your cover as long as the title remains the same. And if you're unsure about your title of your book and whether or not you should consider a subtitle, be sure to check out my free Perfect Title Formula Masterclass. I will add the link to that below in the description. I hope you found this really helpful and that this answered any of the questions you may have had regarding the cover of your own children's book. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. Here's to your very own beautiful children's book cover. Bye!